Hey everybody, it's Brandon, and while this video was literally conceived as a last minute idea just before the events that are described in this video actually took place, this is easily the most ambitious video project that I have taken on to date, and with all the serendipitous things that happened and ended up becoming a part of this video along the way, it's easily the one that I am the most proud of and I really do hope you enjoy it. This is also below to the point where it's going to be a two-part video series, whereas when the part one video goes out on YouTube, I am relentlessly working away at getting part two all done just because both videos do complement each other very well and I feel they're both necessary to document this latest music adventure. This is the special vlog video. I have not done one of those in a bit, dedicated to the trials and tribulations of many other fans who weathered logistical concerns and many hours of scorching sun uh, in order to see, I, I mean, worship the hotly anticipated show, I mean, ritual of the band the Sleep Token. A lot of people across the United States have literally been frothing at the mall uh, to get a piece of the sights and sounds of this tour, or rather, series of rituals, and this was definitely no different for Denver. I know most people watching this video are going to be very familiar with Sleep Token and their work already, but I will give a super summarized explanation of who they are, with the obvious advisory that you absolutely go check them out, and some of the other covers that I've done of theirs on YouTube because those are cool too, because they have been making some awesome and special music for years now, and we're seeing their work turn into some really amazing things for a metal band. Sleep Token is a band formed in London in about September 2016, according to Wikipedia, and they have a strict sense of secrecy about who they are, choosing to remain anonymous. There's definitely more lore to dive into with this band and the mythology they've crafted, but the kind of also the short form of this is that the lead singer of the band going under the moniker Vessel basically is through the music talking about interactions with an entity known as Sleep and for which the other members of the band who also have kind of all black stage get-ups interact with in some way or another. Personally, I would categorize Sleep Token as a band that has hard rock and metal music at the core of what they do, but what's really cool is they're not afraid in the slightest to mash their metal up against all sorts of other genre influences, even in reflected in the music such as R&B, hip-hop, pop even. They're, they're not afraid to say, screw it, let's throw some of that in there too. And what ends up coming from this really broad combination of genres that they do is some really melodramatic and really gut-wrenching songs. And in some cases, and even from stuff that I've personally seen, Sleep Token has done immensely well to bring new people into metal music and listening to metal music that maybe they wouldn't have listened to or given a look to metal music otherwise. And I think that's absolutely amazing that that's happening. Sleep Token has already performed in many other supporting roles, say for other metal bands uh, going on tour in, here in the United States, and as well as rock and metal music festivals throughout the country. But oh boy, did they put the world in a chokehold in 2023. With two full-length albums and a couple other EPs already out there to their name, Sleep Token started 2023 by cold dropping a series of singles uh, leading up to the release of their absolute gem of a third album uh, titled Take Me Back to Eden, which came out on May 19th. The closest approximation I could get for this album is that it's, well, very much an emotional roller coaster. And even if you're not too familiar with the band, I know a lot of people got into Sleep Token uh, with just this year alone because of this album. It's still a fantastic listen. and. They just did so much this year to build up so much hype around their name, and I think it's been fantastic to see. And the album as a whole, if you have, do have a time, or do have time to <laughs> sit down and listen to it in full, it is absolutely well worth it. And so here's where my and many other people's stories begin with Sleep Token and the rituals that they have hosted in the United States this year. On Wednesday, April 12th, Sleep Token announced the summoning of their first ever headlining series of rituals taking place in the United States throughout the fall. And of course, following that, a Live Nation presale occurred on the next day. And then on Friday, April 14th, tickets were released to the general public for sale. Now, I couldn't find any concrete numbers specifically on all the dates that were announced with this, but basically all of the rituals taking place throughout the United States sold out within minutes, if not hours, of the general sale tickets going out to the public. And unfortunately for me, I woke up far too late on April 14th to maybe get one of these general sale tickets at a much more reasonable price. <laughs> and let it be known that the ticket resellers ate really good off of this whole thing, and well, 
I contributed to that. <laughs> but nonetheless, I had secured an access resale ticket and well, believe me, I went and immediately filed a request for a full day off of work, PTO vacation time, <laughs> because I wanted to do everything in my power for when this date rolled around that I could, you know, do what I could to get as close as I could seeing Sleep Token at the show. Yeah, uh, hey boss, I can't come in on September 25th. I, I've uh, <laughs> come down with a case of um, hypnosis-induced missing limbs. What do you mean, are you really okay? I'm not, I, I need to go do this. However, not too terribly long after all the tickets sold out here in Denver, and I don't know if you can leave a comment if this applies to you as well, uh, where else in the United States, what other, what other cities the rituals were going through. We basically were informed that the Sleep Token ritual was moved from the Ogden Theater over to the much larger capacity Mission Ballroom. But with my ticket secured and a few further months of waiting with the new album to worship and listen to, the anticipation that had already been started by this whole thing was left to fester all across the United States. Sleep Token's grand headlining adventure kicked off on September 15th with an appearance at the ill-fated 2023 Blue Ridge Rock Festival, which is also outside the scope of this video, but certainly if you would like to learn more about that particular disaster uh, with that festival, <laughs> there are certainly tons of more YouTube videos out there from various different perspectives of how that all went down. But thankfully the events in Alton, Virginia did not derail Sleep Token from getting around on the road, and with each ritual date, many fans on social media started posting about and advising of some of the things to prepare for as it quickly became apparent uh, that entry lines to various venues were entering lengthy waits to get in. Personally for me, after sharing a Sleep Token cover video to a Facebook fan group that I'm now a member of, someone who actually went to an earlier show in Detroit was kind enough to advise me on maybe what to prepare for for my wait in line here in Denver. And this is where the gravity of the situation all kind of started to hit me, uh, because even if doors were going to be in the early evening at best, which was around 7 p.m. in our case, and since I love Sleep Token so much to the point that I was really determined to do what I could to maybe try and get up to the barricade so I could see them up and close and personal and have that show experience, I was gonna have to endure a rather long wait in line, something which I had personally never, ever, ever done for any band in the history of, well, ever. I woke up on the morning of September 25th, though admittedly I hadn't had the best sleep during the night as I also was waking up about every two hours to try and hydrate the best I could for the day. <laughs> I then ate a hearty breakfast and finished getting ready and also took a fit check photo which I posted in the same Facebook fan group as mentioned before. Me posting this photo ended up with me getting this particular direct message just before I left for the day uh, from someone who was unable to get one of the tour posters uh, from their show in Oklahoma City on September 20th, just about five days prior to the Denver show. Like I'm mentioning in this screenshot here, I didn't want to make any promises uh, just because I knew the merch line was going to be crazy in one way or another, as many people had already pointed out in other cities, but keep this whole thing in mind because we're going to come back to it later. Getting back on track with the journey to the venue, because of the decision to move the Sleep Token Ritual in Denver from the Ogden Theater on Colpax Avenue, which really doesn't have any public transit that reaches it besides buses, and moving it to the Mission Ballroom, thankfully for me, this gave me the opportunity to pretty much rely on public transit to get to and from the venue. All right, let's get rolling. So yeah, I definitely over prepared for coming to the show today. I'll show you here in a second. This is all the stuff I uh, brought in my PPC backpack. Car keys, of course. I brought a Subway sandwich because I'm going to be there at least six hours or so. So we'll uh, get something to munch on. Mints, of course. Deodorant. Don't want to be musty at any point. Uh, several charger cords down here uh, just in case there is any sort of plug-in power near the venue. But 
doubt it, but just in case. I brought three of these battery charger packs because I've been like deathly scared of, um, you know, just not having enough power to even just keep my phone running, let alone keep all the gear running that I want to record with, but it's all there. Tissues. At the uh, bottom of my bag, here's my jacket. I uh, looked at the weather. It's supposed to be about 80, top out at 82 degrees today with no chance of rain, which is excellent, but uh, by the time we're all getting out of there, it's supposed to dip down to like 60, so it's going to be significantly a little more chilly. Uh, and then flanking on the sides here, two water bottles as needed. Flip it around, and then right up front, I have my earplugs and then my backup phone uh, just for another device to record video with if needed. Yeah, like I mentioned, uh, this is the most I've ever prepared for just pulling up to a show to get in line for, so you gotta do what you gotta do. Alright, just got off the train and about another 15 minutes to walk to uh, go ahead and get to the Mission Ballroom. See if, hopefully it's an uneventful trip from here on. This is Winecoop Street, uh, or Winecoop, whatever. <laughs> Uh, where the mission ballroom is located on. Thought I was gonna be blocked off by this construction trying to walk down the street, but nope, we're all good. Thankfully, sidewalk's open, so we're still rolling. So here's the line as it stands. I actually did pretty well. I don't think I'll maybe get right up front, but hey, it's cool. At least I have a decent chance to get some good photo and video here. So it's currently about just after, just after 12 p.m. Uh, I think I'm within the first 50 people that are lined up outside the venue, which is stellar. I kind of actually woke up a little late and left a little later than I was uh, anticipating and wanting to do. But, yep, we're in it for the long haul now. What you got there? Are you going to Yep. Oh, sweet. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Come on. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they're sticking together. Yeah, they have an old <laughs> Thank you. Ah, oh, that's, that's dope. Thank you so much. Can I see yours? That's awesome! So probably looks like this line is just gonna up and curve around the building or over into these under construction apartments, but uh, hopefully the sun doesn't... We're, we, we, got, we got a nice spot in the shade here, but hopefully the sun doesn't, you know, start beating down on us later. Well, no, it's afternoon, so I think we, we should be fine. By arriving at just before 12 p.m., this left me with a seven-hour wait until the doors opened and well, early on in our line wait, it became very apparent that we we're going to have to get creative with how we entertained ourselves because, well, at least for the very first part of me being in line, the most entertaining thing that we had available to us to watch in the area was literally watching paint dry. All right, what's the, uh, what's the uh, over under that we're going to put for them finishing painting before the sun sets? <laughs> <laughs> we, we gotta, we gotta like cheer them on when they get to the end. Yeah. <laughs> All right, they're coming down. Are they coming down? Woo! Woo! Stellar job! In the midst of all this leading up to doors, one thing I do really want to point out, and I'm super appreciative and thankful of, uh, though I personally didn't need it because of the waters I brought, is that twice, at least for the duration that I was there in line, uh, Mission Ballroom actually sent out a staffer with water bottles at no charge uh, for anyone in the early group who maybe needed it. I wasn't expecting a line that long though. I was like, okay. Even at this time of day? Sometimes, yeah, right? <laughs> it's awesome. Stay hydrated, guys. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. There have been people here that have been here, or got here and prepared to get in uh, at least even a couple hours before I got here at 12, so, uh, you know, Sleep Token keeps asking, are you prepared? Um, yeah, I think I think Denver, Denver at least is definitely prepared. So it uh, turns out I took the wrong sandwich with me. <laughs> this was actually my mother's Subway sandwich that we had gotten the day prior, and well, there's really no point in letting it go to waste, so... I mean, there's enough on here that I like that it shouldn't be a problem, but we'll see here. 
Okay, it's a good sandwich. We'll be okay. Okay, further update. There were pickles on the sandwich. Disgusting. But, um, took the pickles off. Now we should be okay. And further, while waiting in line, it happened to be that I was introduced to another music-related YouTuber from here in Denver who I really wanted to talk about Sleep Token and, well, also our current predicament. Everybody, uh, a little fast forward here. It's just after 3 p.m. now. Um, coincidentally, in getting in line today, I happened to bump into another YouTuber. Uh, this is Rachel. You can check her out over on Rachel Reacts. Is that right? Yep. Over on YouTube. Um, she has me blown out of the water with all sorts of stuff she's, she's doing on there, um, looking at all sorts of different bands and music and the like. Um, but she's also here today to uh, check out Sleep Token. So are, are you local here to yes. Denver? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, about 60 miles outside of Denver. Nice. So it, did you have to like drive in or anything? Or? Yeah, I came in last night and stayed with some family in Lakewood. Oh, it's sick. like, you know, 10 minute drive to Denver from Lakewood, so not too bad. Nice. <laughs> so uh, what in particular uh, got you into Sleep Token? I've seen them live. I saw them in 2019, seen them live. Oh, like and, when Sundowning was out? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I got into them around then. They were with like issues. And, uh, their live performance was just amazing. But that was just like an opener thing, I imagine? Yeah, they were an opener. And so from there, I went home immediately on the way home. I was checking out their discography, which wasn't expansive at that time. Sundowning stuff, one or two. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And then I started following them really closely, and more so over lockdown and COVID, watching all their oh, yeah. live videos, getting further into Sundowning and stuff. Um, and yeah. With all this and the stellar year they're having, what's your favorite off the, the latest record? It's hard, either the <laughs> Aberration or Ascensionism or title track or Euclid. <laughs> I have too many favorites. <laughs> yeah, it's too, that's too hard. I agree, it's too. it's been too hard to pick a favorite off there. I know, Um, at, at least, have you seen kind of the set list or anything? Oh, okay, yeah, so you, you got spoilers. Yeah, yeah, you got I'm the you got the spoilers already. Yeah. I, I think they're they're doing ascensionism nowadays. Oh yeah. man, what other what other stuff are you just kind of generally involved in in Denver music, if at all? Uh, well, just lots of shows, lots of shows uh, through my channel. I've found some bands that are local here. Uh, Thousand Friends is one of them. Mouth for War, uh, stuff like that that's local for us. Um, so that's been neat. I go to a lot of shows. I'll go to four this week. This is the first of the four. Well, uh, yeah, no, that's super cool. And the, I, we're all in line here, hyped for the show. But again, Rachel here from Rachel Reacts. Definitely go check her out. I'll, we'll link her socials up because uh, she's got a lot of cool stuff going on there too. So rock on. It would also be through Rachel that I gained access to an Instagram uh, group chat of sorts where it was a mix of people who were already in line, some who were on their way, people asking about what's the situation like on the ground. <laughs> I do want to give a huge shout out to this group chat as a whole, not just because of making the day much more easy to go by with funny conversation and memes about <laughs> waiting in line and variously token related funniness, but also because they've been super helpful even after the show to this day in making sure that this video was the best it could possibly be before it went out on YouTube. All right, coming about just about after Coming up at just after 3.30. <laughs> I've been here a minute. But uh, we're coming up after uh, just 3.30. I don't know if anyone can hear it, but Sleep Token or Sleep Token sound checking right now, which is uh, pretty dope. Yeah, this line's gonna get real crazy here. We're also starting to lose the shade on the general admission line, so that's unfortunate, but I think it'll be fine. Hopefully the sun, it's not too terribly hot for us out here. Oh, hello. Is that a yeah, there's a spider that. Can I get down here and see it? Where'd it go? Hi, spider. There's a spider just dropped down on me and was spinning a web. I didn't even know it was there. Or probably got in my jacket, but hey, little spider. As the sun started to set and more and more people were getting off of work around the same time, the entry lines were growing at a much faster pace. And with that, the need for shade also grew as well, because by that point, the shadow that we had, thankfully, around the time that I had first arrived uh, outside of Mission Ballroom was well and far gone, and yeah, it was getting kind of warm out there. Getting a little toasty. I have my jacket crudely on me and three hours to doors, so we're all doing okay. I should point out now that it was easy to interview Rachel Reacts for this video because, well, she happened to be the person right behind me in line, 
And so I thought for another fun interview, maybe before doors open, I would turn the other direction and look at the person right in front of me. And turns out I got to talk to a newly minted fan of Sleep Token and someone who endured quite a few more interesting logistical hurdles to get to the show here in Denver. Everybody, it's uh, looking now at about just after 4.30, so two and a half hours to doors. Um, I'm here with another line buddy I've met here today. Um, she was right in front of me as I uh, as I hopped in line today. This is Asit from Atlanta. Of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Why'd you come to Denver of all places for Sleep Token instead of... Oh, wow, I didn't have the opportunity to do anything closer and I have a couple of friends here in Denver so I was like might as well go ahead and go. Did you have any like particular challenges trying to get out here with deal? I, I know we kind of talked about this like airport struggles or anything like that. Yes my flight got delayed eight goddamn hours. <laughs> <laughs> when did you hours. fly out? I came yesterday oh, on okay. Sunday the 24th and yeah my flight got delayed eight hours. I was stuck and then they could not find flight attendants for us. They couldn't find a pilot for us. Oh, I was wow. like Oh what wow! Is going on? I should have just drove <laughs> at this point, but I was like, I'm making it over here to Colorado to oh, come man. see this show. But yeah, I made it. I made it here at like three, almost four o'clock yesterday afternoon. Have you ever been to Colorado before? Nope. This is my first time. I don't really go. Places. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of a homebody. No, no. Well, if you know, in the case of these sleep token shows, it's like it, people go. are people absolutely. are going ham to get out here. So absolutely, as they should, because the music is absolutely amazing. What what? What kind of drew you to Sleep Token? Um, I've been listening to like rock and metal for a very long time, since I was a lot younger. And I don't know, their music just kind of speaks to me. I kind of just stumbled across it on YouTube one day, and I was like, what is this? I gotta get some more of this. And then they released their album, and I was like, oh my god, I have to go to one of their shows. I think that was definitely a long, at least for Sleep Token, that, that's yeah, definitely a long. Definitely. I think that was the case for a lot of people, especially yeah. like when they just started cold dropping singles to start the year. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and then like their Spotify or numbers just balloon. So. Yeah, I think they've gained a lot of fans in the past six months than they have over the past couple of years in my personal opinion, yeah. What do you think, what do you think was in it for Sleep Token that they were able to do that for people to, you know, really connect with as many peop new people as they did this year? Honestly, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I think just the music and the lyrics itself kind of just speaks to more people than you think it would. And that kind of attracted all of us to it. You think the funny combinations of genres has anything to do with that too? Um, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that plays a big part. Um, I don't know. It's just different tastes. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, makes them like drop an R&B thing yeah, in, the middle of, in the middle of a song. But I love it. I love and all of it. And then drop some heavy ass guitars yeah, in there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love all of it. Well, looking looking forward to an excellent show tonight. As I know we're going to get that. Yes. Are there are there any? You you don't have an idea of what they're doing on the set list, right? No, no not really. I hope I did, but no. Are there any particular Sleep Token songs that you're hoping to play? Oh my God, the Apparition <laughs> and Aquaregia are my favorite. So definitely one or both of those. I really want to hear Ascensionism and Take Me Back to Eden. Um, I know for sure Chokehold, Rain, and Alkaline are going to be on there already. I fucking love those songs. But literally, whatever they do, I'm content with it. I'm just here <laughs> for the performance. I, from what I understand as well, um, kind of compared to... This is especially now that this is like Sleep Token's like first ever uh, headliner that mm -hmm. they've been doing. Uh, I know they've kind of they got the the headliner liberties as well. So I know there's like some interlude stuff that they've been sprinkling in between songs as well. So I'm hoping to hear all of these. Yeah, I don't know what the they have out there. I don't know what this interlude stuff is all about. Yeah, but, me um, but I know it feeds into the the lore of what what Sleep Token is crafting. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Well, well uh, anything else you want to say for? the good of the cause and just it, otherwise I mean we're all hyped to be here so check out Sleep Token yeah check out Sleep Token check out Sleep Token <laughs> and that's do the it. whole point of the and video so <laughs> <laughs> well hey thanks thanks a ton of and course. I think we'll, we're gonna be in all in for a great show tonight yes Within about an hour or so to the doors opening at Mission Ballroom, I had an idea. As there were now many more people in the line, I thought it would be great if the crowd broke into one giant sing-along uh, with the Sleep Token song, Aqua Regia. Unfortunately, while people on social media appreciated the efforts of instigating this, we ultimately didn't do this because I think at that point, more people were, you know, or really everyone was just focused on also 
getting through the line as hassle-free as they could, and I definitely don't blame them for that. Though I guess you could say we all had granite in our chest as we were all nervously waiting to go get in and see Sleep Token play. Unfortunately, I wasn't really able to record what it looked like getting into the venue itself, just because I'm getting through the security line and having my PVC backpack look through. It did seem a bit rushed where those who had purchased Fast Passes, who were supposed to be like, priority queue, getting in line and getting in through, or getting through security and going up to the barricade. They all kind of went in at the same time together as uh, the general line, which made this whole fast pass thing kind of redundant. Um, we might explore that a little more in part two. Personally, I didn't buy a fast pass for this whole thing, so I'm not too privy as to what ultimately happened with that. Ultimately, and again, owing to the absolute sheer hype of this event, uh, the following clip is about what I best can describe what it looked like as soon as people cleared the security line uh, entering Mission Ballroom. Unfortunately, I know I'm ending this video pretty much on what is a cliffhanger as we enter the Mission Ballroom to see Sleep Token play, but again, there's so much that I wanted to document and talk about in this whole project as a whole that splitting it into two parts was really the best way to see it through. But bear with me and stay tuned as part two will be the next video upload that I make right after this video goes live. Thank you all for watching and I will see you again very soon as we talk about what the actual show for Sleep Token was like here in Denver.